We've been getting a lot of questions from clients about should we adopt a rights plan or a poison pill? Some of you may be familiar with these. They've generally fallen out of favor uh, with institutional investors and proxy advisors, but basically it's an anti-takeover defense whereby you can dilute your stock to make it too expensive for a hostile acquirer to acquire the company without negotiating with the board. If you want more information, our public company handbook that's available on perkinscooey.com has a few pages of explanation about the mechanics of a rights plan. But let's just talk about the rights plan pros and cons right now. So the pros obvious, you know, you do have an opportunity to have a strong anti-takeover defense and a deterrent, frankly, even from a, a hostile acquirer approaching without working through the board, negotiating with the board. The downside is it's not favored by ISS, Glass-Lewis, uh, and major institutional holders like the Black Rocks and Vanguards of the world. Black Rock generally, you know, does not favor rights plans and they will vote against the chairman of the board and the nominating governance committee that the board adopts rights plan without show of approval. Uh, ISS is a little more forgiving if the term is under one year and you have a good reason for adopting a plan. Uh, they won't necessarily vote against your director nominees. And they have recently put out some guidance that says COVID may very well be an acceptable reason they'll consider on a case-by-case -case basis. So those are things to consider. The other part is, do you want to get shareholder approval for the plan and sort of make ISS and glass lose happy by doing so? The problem with that is they will support rights plans that have certain provisions in them. So those provisions are usually a little bit limiting and don't give you the maximum defense. There's a right for redemption and, and duration and other things that they would require in order to vote in favor of the plan or recommend a vote in favor of the plan, I should say. So when you're thinking about what to do, think about how much that matters. What's your stockholder base look like? Is it the vanguards and Black Rocks? Is ISS very influential? How much does that matter to you? Also think about, uh, are you in a unique situation? So is your industry or business even more hard hit or your stock price even more hard hit by the COVID epidemic? Do you have a history or, or an indication of a hostile takeover? Um, so a history of activism, a history of, of being approached. Uh, so it makes sense to get something out ahead of time, adopt a rights plan, maybe with a limited duration to get through the crisis and doing that as a upfront deterrent uh, and a defense upfront, or do you put it on the shelf? And what I think you'll see most companies do and what has been the historical practice is to have it on the shelf. And what that means, you have your counsel draft the plan, you draft the 8A, the 8K, the memo to the board, the board approval resolutions, and you literally have everything ready to go so you can go to the board, get it adopted and implemented at a moment's notice should an acquirer come. A lot of investment banks are going around uh, talking to their clients on anti-takeover these days and they're certainly you know, pointing out the potential benefits of having a plan on the shelf. And we're doing the same when we're asked that putting it on the shelf should be something to think about absent unique circumstances of actually adopting it in advance. So hope that's helpful and we'll have more of these to come in the coming weeks and months.